Alrighty, folks. So here's what we left off with. We had a basic contact form that we took and styled and made look all nice when we hover and focus on it. And what we're going to do today is look at putting some background images behind it. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the images that I went and downloaded. Like I said, um, I basically just downloaded like two packs or one pack of stuff and it came with all of these in it. And what I was looking for were good images that I could use for the name, email, and um, then the comment section or uh, message. So it's important that you know the name of the file that you're looking for. So at this point, go and find a good background image for the name portion of the email. I mean the name portion of the form. So look through your icons and everybody's is going to be different. Mine is called user.png and it gives sort of that that look that uh, is conventional for working um, when you're looking to get somebody's name or user information. It may be something different for you but at this point you should have um, something that you know. And all you need to know is the name of it and where it's located. So it should be um, mine is in my images folder inside of a folder called icons and the files called user.png and that's going to be important because we need to know that when we um, write our CSS. So now I'm going to come back into my HTML as the kids like to say and let's come down all the way to the HTML and let's see how this is marked up. So one of the nice things about the way we coded this is that for the name, we have um, an ID, unique identifier there that we could use with our CSS. And for our email, we have a unique identifier. And that's going to help us because that's going to allow us to do um, input hashtag name and then we can get, um, apply the, the background image. Right. So let's go back up to our CSS. Sorry, technical difficulties up here. All right. Let's come up to where we have input comma text area. And underneath of that rule, I'm somewhere around line 40 right now, we're going to put input hashtag name. And there's two things you have to do here. First, you have to put the background image in. And I want it right about where my cursor is now. But the other thing you have to do is you have to pad all of the text in that so that it's not sitting right on top of the image. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If we come back into our code, and using CSS that we already know, let's put a background image behind this by typing URL, and then in parentheses, the link to the image. So mine is in images, icons, forward slash, user, dot png. So let's do just that and see what we get. All right, we go and test that out. I now have a user icon behind my entire background image. How many of you got something like this? Let's go back to the code. Okay, so once we have that running, what we could do is we're going to come back and we're going to add some more rules to this background image here. And the first thing we're going to do is say no repeat. And what that does is prevents the background image, as we know, from repeating over and over again, which is a good thing. And if I test it out in the browser, I should see now that I only have one user icon. But that user icon is not exactly where I would like it to be. I'd like it to be a little bit centered. And we could do this by changing the X and Y coordinates for where it's going to be located. So I'm looking at this and I want it to come in about maybe two pixels or so and then I want it to be vertically center. 
And there's a little trick we could do to do that. First, after no repeat, I put space, two pixels, and that will bring it in two pixels. And then I could either say come down four pixels and guess how high it is, or I could just say 50%. So notice that in one case I'm using pixels and another the percentage. And that just is because it happens to be convenient. You could use whatever you want here as your unit of measure. Guess what? You could even say two inches. But we use pixels on the web or relational um, measurements such as 50%. I'm just going to test that out real quick. Looks like I need to bring them in more than I thought, so I'll change that to five pixels. And looks like I really need 10 pixels, maybe even 15. Now that's looking nice. I like it. I like it. I like it. The only problem is, is that if I click in and start typing now, my words come right over top of this icon, and it's no longer visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply left padding to the inside of this form so that when we start typing, it would start typing about here as opposed to here at the beginning. So right underneath our background image rule under input name, we're going to do padding hyphen left. And I think for mine, say about 50 pixels, see where that sticks up. She said. Uh, all right. And that's looking good for me, but you might have to change yours. And something else you'll notice is that now that we've increased the padding, the actual width for this input field has changed. So again, now that we've increased the padding here, the width has changed. So now we need to go back and change the actual width of this element. But before we do that, what we're actually going to do is instead of applying the padding left individually every single time, we're going to apply padding left to all of the input fields. Because we know we're going to want to do the same thing with email um, and any other forms that we might have. So what we're going to do is actually take out this padding left. And paste it into a new rule that applies to all the input fields. And this way, all we have to change is the individual background um, image, and we don't have to mess with the width. And I'll say width is now equal to, because we added 50 on, 510 pixels. Because I took the original width, and I subtracted from it how much padding we added. So you should now have oh, something else we're noticing here is that because we overrode the hover effect of the background color when you click into it, we need to redeclare that. So notice how the other fields have a white background or lighter background, but the name field doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because in this line, we overwrote the default background color. So we would have to add in EF, EF, EF. And now we should get that background color back. OK. Um, we will stop here and you will have the rest of the time to play around with changing different background icons um, and then we'll come back tomorrow and sort of clean it up as our last day of learning about styling forms.